What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is about a force that was known as the Last Republic Navy. By this, I mean that there was the Navy of the Old Republic era, and the Republic's Navy during the Clone Wars. But a few decades before the Kaminoans' military creation was revealed, there was the Outland Region's security forces. The ORSF was referred to by its supporters as the Republic Navy, and later galactic historians would realize that the Clone Army wasn't a Republic creation at all, but spawned by the Sith. But the ORSF was one of the most controversial things around in this pre-Clone Wars era, all because of reformations put in place after the destruction of the Sith Empire. The Rusan reformations of 1000 BBY dramatically limited the strength of planetary defense forces. Instead of having a full-strength military, the Galactic Republic would use the Judicial Forces and Jedi Order to respond to specific local threats with small task forces. Basically, they thought the Sith were completely destroyed, and because the Sith Empire was responsible for the galactic-scale major wars, without them, the Republic just had to worry about pirates. The problem is, when it's your business being pillaged, or your family being killed, knowing that it was just pirates isn't very comforting. While the Republic citizens of the Corps were protected, it was often the Outer Rim colonies that dealt with all the criminals. As their individual system militaries became weaker, it started a vicious cycle that of course made the criminals stronger. Lawlessness defined the Outer Rim, all during a time called the Great Peace of the Republic. And while they weren't completely abandoned, many worlds felt like those in high crime areas here on Earth, with the message being, you can't have a gun, just call the police and they'll bring the guns. Sometimes it works, other times you're dead before the cops, or in this case, the judicial forces, get there. As you might imagine, some planets didn't sit back and wait to become victims. On Ariadu, there was a human male known as Ranolf Tarkin. Born in 97 BBY, or 75 years before the Clone Wars, he would join the Seswana Defense Forces at an early age. The SDF would protect 21 different star systems, including the Ariadu system from which the Tarkins originated. At the age of 31, Ranolf had already spent more than a decade fighting pirates with the relatively weak weaponry and starships that were available to planetary security forces post the Rusan Reformation. But in 66 BBY, a heroic campaign against the powerful Del Masi pirates earned him renowned as a great military leader. Nine years after that, the middle-aged Ranolf would enter into military retirement, taking an executive position at Quintad Orbital Manufacturing. At this time, he was considered the most influential person in the entire Seswana sector. During his life as both general and CEO, Tarkin saw firsthand how credits corrupted most of the core world politicians and weapon manufacturers, and most importantly, that after all of his efforts, the threats from pirates and criminals was growing. He knew that there was only one way to bring back law and order to this sector. It was a Hail Mary attempt to have the Seswana Senator persuade the Republic's leader to grant him a special title of Governor General. Then Supreme Chancellor Thoris Darris was convinced that Ranolf was the man to solve the problem. In a way, think of it like Tarkin pulled off a much smaller version of Palpatine being granted emergency powers to deal with a particularly difficult problem. Of course, Ranolf didn't cause that problem, but you see what I mean. With this new power, he went to work increasing the strength of the Seswana Defense Forces, employing more preemptive strikes against the pirate and criminal holdouts, while building more powerful warships at Quintad Orbital Manufacturing. He had to step down from his executive role at the company to accept the Governor General position, but Republic Judicial Forces worried that he was just using this to make a profit, and that he was quickly transitioning away from just being a local police force. Judicial Forces inspected QOM and shut down the facility for breaching the Rusan Reformations. To Ranolf, this was maddening. The Republic was acting like his connection to QOM was an outrageous display of corruption, while it was the only deal that was actually bringing about any good, and everyone knew that organizations like Kuat Drive Yards and the Trade Federation had much dirtier hands. Those guys kept finding ways to funnel weapons into the hands of criminals, but it was Tarkin's budding defense force that was cut down. But not a man to be defeated, if they wanted to play politics, he would take advantage of every loophole. He still had relationships with other shipwrights in the surrounding sectors of the Outer Rim. By using his popularity, these connections, and those systems' own desperate want to end piracy, he got them all to sign a mutual defense pact. This came along with relaxed trade between these regions, but importantly for Ranoff's lifelong goal, all these different sectors combined their planetary defense forces. They decided to share navigational data and technology, while also giving command over all of these combined forces to the Governor General from Ariadu. 
Overnight, the fractured local response forces became one coherent regional military that called itself the Outland Region Security Forces. The senators from each of these sectors would support this decision against vehement protests from others in the Senate. And while the politicians tried to figure out what legal precedent could be used to shut this down, Tarkin waged an all-out war on piracy in the area that was now known as the Greater Sesuana. Within three years, this area was now the safest part of the Outer Rim. A brilliant success story if you ask someone from this region, but many senators were still enraged at the fact that he outmaneuvered all of their core world restrictions and worried that this Tarkin Empire might come back to wage war on the Republic. By the year 54 BBY, these fears were at their peak, leading to the general from Iriadu to do the unthinkable. He stepped down. After a lifetime of fighting crime, the 53-year-old simply resigned his military position. Don't misunderstand it though, the ORSF was still in place, just run by someone else, and it wasn't like Tarkin was just going to sit on the porch and sip tea into his golden years. He flipped the focus from accusations of how he was the big bad tyrant, turning it towards the other corrupt senators by holding several committees on Republic corruption. When he became the Seswana representative, he made it clear that his goal was to give over the ORSF to the Republic, that it should be seen as a clear proof of concept, to be further strengthened and expanded upon to protect the entire galaxy via a strong Republic Navy. The committees that he led would drag out judicial department ministers and grill them on holocam about why it was that they were so inept, why they didn't do anything to raise more alarm over violence in the Outer Rim, and why it seemed like they only cracked down on citizens or planetary security forces when they wanted more firepower, but conveniently supported the weapons dealing corporations with ties to so many Republic senators. One of the most direct attacks was on a fellow human from Ariadu, then Senator Valorum. This will go on for 10 years, with Renoff also trying to get the Republic worried about the Trade Federation's increasing power. As a man who had already played the loopholes to make a sizable navy, he instantly recognized that the Trade Federation was using the legitimate threat of piracy to grow their defensive powers. Defense can quickly turn into offense, and Tarkin was stunned that so many looked the other way, as the TF had what would be considered in any other scenario to be the largest naval power in the galaxy. What's worse is that because it was granted weaponry to protect their trade vessels, of course these ships had to cross sector lines. Even Tarkin's much-feared ORSF was restricted to the sectors that had opted in. If it moved into any other sector of the galaxy, most in the galaxy would have seen this as Tarkin launching a war on the Republic. But in one of the most riveting speeches in the Senate, Tarkin said, quote, A monster of our own creation. The Trade Federation didn't become powerful by exploiting the Outer Rim, it was supported by Ariadu's own House Valorum, and supported by Tag and others. Valorum, of course, is the man that would become Chancellor, and Tag is a reference to Tag Company that would produce a lot of the droids and swoop bikes bought in great numbers by criminal organizations. Now in the year 44 BBY, the Republic came under a surprise attack by the Stark Commercial Combine, a coalition of pirates, bounty hunters, and criminals in general. Ranoff discovered a connection between the Trade Federation and the Stark Commercial Combine, who together were able to drive up the cost of Bacta while granting the TF more firepower. But instead of exposing this, he used it to blackmail Newt Gunray into giving up the location of the peace talks between the Republic and Stark. When the meeting commenced, Tarkin received a signal from Gunray and broke the Rusan Reformation's restrictions by having the ORSF jump through hyperspace to the other side of the galaxy. But Stark had anticipated something like this, and he had outbound signals from the meeting room carry a virus that screwed with the hyperdrive computers. During this journey, the ships had been packed full of Republic judicial forces that agreed with Tarkin's vision of a Republic military. The ships on this mission were referred to as the Republic Navy, and the troops as the Republic Army. So with this virus, the first time a Republic military was deployed in centuries was sent off their hyperspace course, flying into black holes, suns, and smashing into planets and moons. But a few did survive, including Tarkin's flagship, the Invincible. The ironically named ship went down over Troikin, and the forces under Tarkin's command had to retreat into a nearby cave system. The Jedi were able to protect Senator Valorum and Newt Gunray, but when Adigalia was able to escort them back to Coruscant, the Senate still refused to send more help. Plo Koon took command of the judicial forces that Tarkin had been commanding, which enraged him to his core. The Jedi Master figured out a plan to trap all of the Stark Combine troops in the caves, 
but Tarkin wanted them all dead. Though the old general from Eriadu originally hoped that this mission would prove the strength of the ORSF, and catapult him into the kind of fame that would get him the Supreme Chancellor position, but at this moment, he was fine with just settling with killing a bunch of pirates. He stole the explosives and killed himself in an eruption that freed a swarm of terrifying chalet bugs, which then devoured all the pirate troops of the Stark Combine. The ORSF was lost, Ranolf was dead, and his enemies were strengthened, with Newt Gunray profiting from it all, and Valorum ascending to Supreme Chancellor, but there were some consolation prizes for Ranolf. House Tarkin decided to support Valorum if he would honor their fallen general as the hero of Troikin. With public reverence for a man who had pushed for a Republic military for decades, pro-militarization faction gained more sway. Many felt that his dream had come true in 22 BBY with the Military Creation Act at the opening of the Clone Wars. This of course had the added bonus that it was against the hated Trade Federation. But there was one more prize of course, that his younger cousin Willif Tarkin would rise to be one of the best military minds in the galaxy, rising through the ranks of the Republic, and later Empire, who sought galactic law and order above all else. So that's it for the history of the Last Republic Navy. A lot of these details come from the Essential Guide to Warfare, the novel Rogue Planet, and the Stark Hyperspace War comic arc. But what do you think of Ranulf Tarkin and the ORSF? Tarkin did have dreams of becoming the Supreme Chancellor, but was this a bad thing, or did he really want to do good and rid the galaxy of crime? There was definitely a lot of looking out for his business friends and the creation of the ORSF, but does that negate the positive effect it had on the region? And how do you feel about the Republic's response? They cracked down on Ranolf and the ORSF harder than any other organization, yet the systems voluntarily joined their forces together to solve a problem that the Republic wouldn't. And do you think Ranolf would have liked Palpatine's empire? What about the Tarkin Doctrine posited by Willoff, which of course resulted in things like the Death Star? Definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, as I believe this whole story is one of the most interesting parts of Star Wars lore. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make these videos, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, no matter how big something gets, problems are always solved locally. And the Force will be with you, always.